Good morning. I found myself some GUR. So what do we do? Well, keeping it simple, it's the nearest point of relief plus that club length. Now, what I forgot to mention in the last video was obviously not near the hole. There's the green. I'm not dropping this side, am I? So if I was to imagine an arc from that, from the flag, and it doesn't matter if, you're, if your GUR is 150 yards away, you've still got to imagine that arc. So if I draw a line, then on the right hand side it's way over there, and on the left hand side it's way over there. So sometimes you simply got to drop this side and chip over. And you might argue, well, this is fringe where they put this new drainage in. I should be putting. Now I can't putt. Well, that's golf for you. My second spot today. I'm on a winter green, a temporary green. Something that is being uh, preserved for use should the main green over the hair become out of use. There's no GUR markings, there's no white paint, there's no sign in the middle of this green. What on earth do I do? Well, there's a little rule called wrong putting green and it kind of like makes all of this behave like GUR. So, nearest point of relief, full relief. You know, don't just get the ball off the green, you've got to get your feet off the green. Full relief, plus a club length, no near the hole. One final little thing that I haven't mentioned so far, but no one's picked me up on. The ball is allowed to roll an additional club length. So you measure off your club length. You can drop it at the extremity as long as it bounces, as long as it touches the ground within that club length. If it then rolls less than one more club length, not near the hole, then you're in play. And that's important that I say that because the next GUR location is coming up when we get to the 10th green. So my last bit of GUR involves bunkers. 2015 I was a member of a golf club that refurbished the bunkers on 10 holes. So they're all dug out, no sand in them, and they were all declared GUR. I was playing a competition with a competition secretary. A long par four, I hit a four iron in, came across the corner of the green and plopped right under the face of the bunker. So when I got up here and had a look around, the green was exceptionally long, front to back, and the flag was way at the back. So I had a look at my angles and everything and distances to find my nearest point of relief. Now as it happened, because I dropped in over the face, my nearest point of relief was on the green side, not in the rough side. So I stuck my tee peg in, collected my ball, walked around to the green with my driver and started doing a bit of measuring. Now what is important to note is that the bunker where they had dug it out, they dug it much closer to the green to make the golf course play harder. So when I stuck my tee peg in green side, I was very close to the edge of the green. So the edge of the bunker are marked with my club. It's not that one. This is where the edge of the bunker was, really tight. To the green. So stood in the bunker, I marked my spot and then I started measuring diagonally across and I stuck my second tee peg in. Now as you know you've got to drop the ball within this club length area but it's allowed to roll an additional club length. So because there's a little bit of slope here, when I dropped my ball, it rolled onto the green. A 
typically this green is a little bit steeper. In fact, it's just rolled it's just rolled 25 feet away off the front. But the green that I was on, I was able to drop within my club length. Ball landed within my club length and it just dribbled onto the green from where I could put. But the story does not end there. See, by what I was doing, I did nothing wrong. I determined my, my nearest point of relief that it was in fact greenside because the flag was way up there. I measured my club length and then I dropped it and it just dribbled four or five inches onto the green where I had a putt. Competition secretary who was way over the other side hacking around in the rough, he came over and goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking a drop, G U R. You can't drop there, you've got a drop, so you have to play over the bunker. I said, no, it's ground under repair. You, chew, you find your nearest point of relief. I said, I was right under the face. My nearest point of relief was no more than about 18 inches away from where my ball was sat. I said, you're right, if I was at the back of the bunker, away from the green, my nearest point would be out the back of the bunker and I would have to play over it. I said, but as it happens, I'm this side. And he couldn't argue with me because he didn't really know the rules of golf that well, and I did. But lo and behold, two days later, an email was sent out to the rest of the club and it basically said, when you go into a bunker that is G-U-R, you must drop backwards and play over it. So me being me, I fired an email straight back. I said, you can't invent local rules out of thin air, especially rules that contradict other rules. You know, making you drop backwards isn't a G-U-R, it's bloody water hazard, isn't it? So, so you cannot create a rule that contradicts another rule and fundamentally changes the way we play golf. And the fact is with GUR, it is your nearest point of relief. And if that happens to be good for you, so be it. If it's bad for you, well, that's golf. So, um, as I say, learn the rules of golf to protect yourself from people who don't know the rules of golf, but will impose or try to impose some half-assed rule upon you. And some of those people will have a title and a reserved parking space outside the clubhouse, sadly. Yeah, having a, having a, a parking space with your nameplate on doesn't guarantee that that individual knows the rules of golf. What a glorious day for a change. Cheerio.